All right. We're back. Boys are back in town. Back in town after a long, month long where we were mixed up, huh? Yeah, it's been about a month since we've uh, been together uh, between the Philippines and uh, Japan, I believe, for you, right? And Orange Beach. Yeah, not near as exciting as as uh, Collier's places. But well, hey. what do you expect, you know? What do you expect? Hey, right? Thin Lizzy. Thin Lizzy. Yes, Thin Lizzy, you're a winner. The boys are back in town. So That's right. Michael uh, Bruno. Bruno's in. Karen Charles. Yep. Love to see you guys. Thanks for coming in. What an exciting got them all time. In. Man, everybody's coming. Let's have a little fun in the happy that's, hour. That's because the boys are back in town. Rachel's here. That's what I'm talking about Did we today. Just see her, by the way? Yeah, so we just saw her. Yeah. I thought so. Today we're we've got uh we got some some 529 plans. Kylie Jenner. It's Kylie. She's in the at headlines, right? I never thought she would make the happy hour. Did you? Never thought that. Never. But hey, you and I better might be want to take some pointers from her. I, absolutely. We got some interest rates, and uh, then we'll highlight highlight one stock. Absolutely, the stocks. So, uh, the stock market's kind of going crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Jumping around a little bit. A lot of things moving. Exciting well, if you're on the right stock. Yeah, and I started looking at uh, a couple of. Uh, last night, Square and uh, a few other ones that have just yeah. gone crazy this year. S Square. We're going to talk about Square in a little bit. Square is a little uh, uh, software company payment something. Yeah. There's Stephanie Barnes. Hey, Stephanie. All right. Let's well, David, here. you got back from the beach. How was the beach last week? Oh, it was great. Really nice. Uh, we stayed, stayed at Orange Beach, so it was a little bit closer. Um, so it was easy to get right to the pool, onto the beach. So the beach bum, I'm, I'm usually not a big fan of the ocean, but I was... Uh, you don't like sand yeah, it's been where a lot it gets more. it everywhere. Nah, but I spent a lot more time in the ocean last week than I ever have, so that was cool. That was well, time. how about your wallet? Uh, it, well, you know, we talk about money here, so. Yeah, um, actually, wasn't too bad because we, we spent a lot of time staying in, eating in, um, just going to the beach and the pool, so that's a lot cheaper than going to the water parks and um, – And you bought drinks to bring back. Didn't oh, go. yeah, yeah, yeah. Go to the store to get – to get beverages, so so weren't we're out as much. Uh, <laughs> spending the... That's crazy. Hey, well, Taylor Welling. Well, we got uh, uh, we got tuition checks are starting to roll out. It. I know a lot of uh, folks that watch uh, have uh, college kids, as you do. Man, it's starting to hit, isn't it? Yeah, those tuition bills are surprising too. Sometimes you get little little surprises. Hey, yo, more this year. Yeah, it's and, like what. How do you suggest, because, you know, uh, with, with the pickup and the number, the demand uh, for a lot of people getting mortgages and that sort of thing, is there any planning you would do? Would you segregate that money kind of? So is it how does it affect if they're trying to buy a house now and also planning for that uh, when it's such a close one to, say, August, September? Man, I tell you, you're, you're just talking about splitting out the money. Yeah, and, because and we don't want to look like there's, I mean, $10,000 all of a sudden leaving and the bank's going, hey, where did that go? Right. Well, I would I would say it's always a good idea to have separate accounts so you can split the money out and not see it um, and watch the money grow. It's just easier to manage, I think, for, for people. Obviously, in the mortgage business, when we ask you for your documents and, and we get, uh, you know, 25 bank accounts, that's, <laughs> that's a little difficult. But really, the, the money coming in on the mortgage side, the money coming in is the question mark. So if we have $10,000 coming in, then, then we're, we get concerned about that. Um, you know, we could see those big expenses going out. So, but 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 if, what if I have a a five twenty nine plan that I I, I write it because obviously I might yeah. write the check and I bring it in. I need to make sure I'm keeping good records, right? Of oh, that sure, income sure. coming in. But that five twenty nine plan, you probably keep separate account, separate statement, and everything. So we may not even see that. We may not even pull it into the mortgage file. Well, as as a lot of things are in Alabama, we got some. Uh, if anybody has any influence with the state legislature, they have missed a big opportunity here. The, they, they refused to change the law to specifically allow, as part of the, uh, the Trump's uh, tax plan, as you remember, 529 plans went through a massive change in that uh, elementary and high school for private school was allowed to be uh, put money in, take money out, because you could just, say, throw $8,000 in there on day one, day two, bring it back out, get a tax deduction on your, uh, yeah. roughly about $500 back. Okay. Right. So, but the state legislature refuses to write it back into the code that Alabama will comply, right? And so, people need to be real careful if they're reading the federal law and making sure Alabama. they don't pull out that money yet 
for private school because you may end up with a tax problem uh, relative to only elementary and private so high school. So is there somewhere they can read that, or is it a CPA question? Or it's what a is CPA that? question, but the CPAs don't even know right now. Uh, we, we did some digging on it, and, and even college counts that manages Alabama's 529 plan say, yeah, we have no idea. <laughs> yeah, so, and I tell you, arguing with the government is not where you want to be. You know, it, it doesn't make sense. Uh, I think what's, what, what the state's worried about is they're going to lose – if everybody loses five hundred dollars off their taxes, that's a significant that is involved. It's a significant hit to the revenue, I'm sure. Yeah. But by golly, they're taking all that sales tax, so I really don't care from Amazon and everything else, right? Well, we got we got Barkley Russell and Valerie Morgan, two great people that I work with here in the office watching. And I know Valerie's probably got some connections down in Fairhope. So if you don't mind, we we picked up cheap sunglasses today. I've never heard of it. Whoop. Um Looks kind of crazy. Yep. Tastes yep, pretty yep. good. Oh, so yeah. Valerie, Tastes so can, good. Mmm. If you can give me ah. some... Uh, Somebody let some people DA. know. Oh, that's your initials. Oh, that's, that's Stearns. Yeah. That's your initials. That's right. Sorry. They might have meant DA, too. But but if you can <laughs> let the people know down at Fair Hope Brewing Company, I believe, uh, we need some, need some sponsors. So, anyway. Well... You know, I tell you what, everybody wants to talk about these, you know, like uh, Clark Howard calls them the big monster mega banks. Yeah. Look, first of all, they were ripping people off, and you know the one I'm talking about. They they drive a stagecoach, you know, uh, is a little mascot, because I don't well, want to get into We talked about them a few weeks ago. Yeah. By name. And uh, Yeah, by name. And, I mean, I'm telling you, folks, the reason you don't want to do business with these clowns to uh, is is this. This is a FedEx envelope right here that we got today in my rental management company that we have. They sent me a $30 check, a $30 check in a $29 mailing envelope. <laughs> I mean, so that's managing I mean, expenses, right? That there. is. All they could have done was tell me, go down to the branch. You know, probably we would have sent somebody down there. I'd have gone down there. We'd have done it. You know what the grand cost would have been? Nothing. Maybe 10 cents for this paper. But right. instead, imagine how many people they're sending $30 checks in a FedEx yeah, priority. Yeah, got to be a better way. And gotta by the way, be a better way of doing that. Priority overnight. Priority. Not just overnight. Got to. And it's not their their darn money, so they don't they the workers' money, so they don't care. Yeah, they don't care. Although although I did see you shipping priority overnight though. Well, that was that was actually my laptop sending it back to my <laughs> IT department so they could fix it because it's been crashing all week. Yes, yeah, so you need a good computer. Yeah, got to have that coming coming and going. You have quickly. an IT department. Yes, man. Of course, you are big time. I mean, hey, I mean, what's hey, next, Jeff? We, we are we are the the small town field lender, but we got we, Fairways and a big IT company. Department. They are a big company. You did go to Georgia Tech, so we though. got a lot of advantages on being a big company. But we also, you know, we're right here in Birmingham, so you can reach out and and ring our necks if we don't do what we're supposed to do. Yeah, but you have an IT department. But anyway, let's anyway. move it on. Kylie Jenner. <laughs> All right, so here's here's the headline. She was the uh, youngest self-made billionaire, and everybody's up in arms about this, okay? Nobody understands why they use the word self-made. By the way, it's not that Kylie Jenner is a billionaire, which is fascinating to me, but if you think about Isn't it... Is she just 21? Uh, yeah, barely. Yeah. Okay. And, and, she, and she, of course, has her cosmetics line, but the big debate is... The use of the word self-made. And, and the question, you know, I'm one that says, fine, let's use it. Because I believe there's a big difference between getting a head start. Because that's the big debate. Well, I see. I think I think in here, uh, let me look real quick. They said the uh, cosmetic company, real, reality t television show, uh, various sponsorships, endorsements, $900 million empire that will soon reach a billion. And, you know, before... Right before the show, we we looked up Beyonce. Her net worth is three hundred and fifty million. So to say that all the work that Beyonce's done, right, a versus ton of it. Kylie Jenner, I know she's got her name, and I I felt completely different. I still don't understand the self made. Okay, but for her to be at almost a billion at twenty one, when you look at other people like Beyonce yeah. that are three hundred fifty million, she's doing something right. She's doing something amazingly well. Well, because I think so many people blow up their business by making dumb decisions, dumb hiring decisions, yeah. putting wrong people in charge, mismanagement of money. Yeah, and and again, I've got to say, I don't know that much about Kylie Jenner. Okay, I, I don't really fair. care to know that I used much to watch about Kylie Jenner. I've heard that I don't know. I've heard some things. I really don't care, but. 
900 million, a billion dollars is still a lot. Self made, I still don't agree with. <laughs> She'd be the youngest, by the way. The youngest. Now, self made, in my mind, would be, you know, like a Warren Buffett, okay? The guy had a, uh, a paper crazy. route, and then, his, and then he'd, he'd pick up the, the, the newspaper from his dad every week looking at stocks. He'd hear his dad talking about stocks, so he started investing in stocks. I that get that. That guy, in my mind, is self made. Uh, a guy like Elon Musk, I don't know his story specifically well either, but I know the guy works so hard. That Bruno's he, right. It's all about social media. And, true. And, and, and I think some of our disbelief is, uh, is I'm saying our collectively, us older people, uh, our collective not wanting to change, wanting to see through this prism of how we used to do it. And one thing you got to say about those girls, they got a motor. Yes. And they, gotta, they get up and go every day. Now, what they do after hours, I don't know, because it all started with a tape. Well, but but they they are hard, they <laughs> yeah. are hard workers. Well, I think this is the new uh, this is the new economy, right? Eyeballs, uh, these reality television shows, hey, you know, getting this this group around you that you know that every time you post something on Instagram, somebody sees it. How many people see it when you do something? How many people see it when you sneeze? A lot of people. See it with Kylie Jenner, right? We should, they're, they're very transparent, right? I mean, we know the warts and all. That's why you people hate them, and that's why people love them. All the above. But I think at the minimum, at minimum, as a business guy, you have to respect it. Oh, you definitely respect it. But, I mean, you know, walking in with the famous last name, the infinite amount of investment capital, uh, safety nets. You know, I'm thinking about this. Like, like when you're going through high school, when you're going through uh, college, and, and you've got... You're thinking about careers. You're doing multiple things, right? How many things is she really worried about? Uh, not much. Not much. D does she really have to know cosmetics that well? Not really. No. It's does hiring she, the right people, I, I mean, though. But I've seen too. I guess more to my point is I've seen too many people here in Birmingham and around the country implode their business by making decisions that imploded what they had going that was good certainly certainly now she could make bad decisions great thing there she could make a lot of bad decisions and lose money and still be fine yes. you got plenty of people business small business owners in birmingham small business owners across the country make a couple of bad decisions and they're out of business yeah hey uh narissa if you're still here narissa's our friend uh from palawan philippines uh you know who kylie jenner is hey, don't Jennifer. you uh narissa uh I mean, this will tell you how well known she is. I mean, we're talking on the other side of the world, on an island, and this girl has that kind of uh, yeah, uh, and I, power. And reading the article, there's other companies that are trying to catch up with this type of uh, uh, marketing, if you will, to where you get your name out there, you get your brand out there, and everybody knows you. You're a household name. Yeah, and 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 but uh, but I think what just like the happy hour, right? Uh, absolutely, just like, the, real just happy like the happy hour. Except you know, one thing I'll tell you though about them is that they're very raw. A lot of what you see is what you get with them, which is I think why our voyeuristic society loves it, right? I mean, there yeah. it is. Whether you like it or you not, I know my mother doesn't like it. You know, uh, my wife people, doesn't either. People but. don't want you to know that much about them, but uh, they want to know about other people. Right. Absolutely. Well, moving on, uh, enough Kardashian talk. Um, so interest rates, um, interest rates are relatively unchanged. We're still around 4.5%. <laughs> oh, yeah, so Rain did buy some of the lipstick. Bought some of her lipstick. Yeah, there See go. there? That's how you get to $900 million. You start but, with uh, two. Yeah. But uh, rates are relatively unchanged, 4.5% on 30-year money, 4% on 15 there's really been nothing meaningful in the last couple of months to move interest rates. People are still nervous. So we hear the buyer saying, I gotta lock it in, I gotta lock it in. Man, I tell you, it it it, it that's true. Uh, the Fed is still tightening, the the, the economy is still mm -hmm. strong. Uh not tightening, I'm sorry. They're Loose, still well they're still raising the raising rates. Raising the rates, but they're still hiking interest rates. So uh, that's happening. But one thing I want to talk about is is a big term in our business right now and, and what's going on in the mortgage business is margin compression. I know that doesn't sound exciting, but what do you mean the, by margin compression? It's basically just the, and I'm alluding to the price wars. I'm alluding to the fighting over the business that a lot that's going on in the mortgage business right now. Refinances obviously are down okay, because rates are going up. Sure. Right. Uh, purchase transactions are down. Why? Because inventory is down. It's amazing because we should not be seeing what we're exactly. seeing with the demand that we yeah. have. Yeah. We have buyers. We just don't have enough houses. So, 
net effect is less transactions. Uh, online lenders now are taking some of the business. Uh, buyers are going straight to online lenders. Um, Question came in. Yep. So he's saying, uh, how do you guys handle it if the rates go down after someone has locked a rate? Now, we've got uh, provisions in place to renegotiate that with our um, lock desk. So that's how we handle that. We go you back to You have a lock them. desk and a, a, and an IT, an IT guy. I'm, Fancy. Wow. But yeah, we, we've got ways to handle that. What's up, Jason? Um, if rates go down. But so we've got less, less com, uh, transactions. So what do you do? If you're in a competitive market, highly competitive market, you got excess capacity, meaning we've still got processors, we've still got underwriters, we've still got people working. They need we, jobs. We need loans, we need revenue. What do we do? We offer gotta, deals. We gotta offer deals. So we, we have to cut, cut the prices sometimes and, and compete. Uh, and that's when it gets highly competitive. And that's what's going on right now in the mortgage business. And I just wanted to, to bring that up a little bit um, because that obviously affects the real estate market. It Absolutely, affects, it does. Uh, the Absolutely. buyers and, and interest rates that they're getting. Um, and stuff that you're hearing on the radio, some some marketing that you're hearing from mortgage companies too. <laughs> well, especially the national guys, right? Yeah, it's it's you don't want to say it's a uh, there's Courtney. Hart. Yes, yes, <laughs> the queen has arrived. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll start, she's getting around. We're getting around to the stock segment. Yeah, that's so that's, that's why she's here. Um, keep talking. But so some other interesting information was um, you know we've got some people in the industry that are talking. Uh, that have always had good content. I heard a guy this week, uh, Barry Habib, talking about a recession in, in the next couple of years. And it was very interesting on the why, because I hadn't even thought about this, uh, a recession coming or right around the corner, because the economy has been so so good for so long, right? Yeah. Uh, but we are long into this uh, move from 2008, when things were bad, right? Mm -hmm. We're 10 years into it now, so obviously... I think the cycle is usually about every 10 years you, you run into a rough patch. Um, the question is how long, right? How yeah. long is that rough patch? How bad is it? But the two, the two big reasons, uh, and basically a recession just means the economy is going to slow down. The two big reasons, one of them was the, the two-year versus the 10-year yield, which I know a lot of you guys are not interested in. So it's, it's an inverted yield curve. If you care at all about that term, then Google it. Um, <sighs> the other one was the unemployment rate. Okay, so this is what may apply to people a little bit more. Uh, the bottoming out of the unemployment rate. Yep. Okay, so right now unemployment's really low, and we're excited about that. How Do you know any stats on the underemployment rate? If you don't know underemployment, meaning yeah. they, they're not making as much money as they should be right. or they have been. They're do just, you know anything on that? I don't, and I don't, I don't know that that comes up as much when your unemployment rate's low because uh, typically underemployment means you're taking a job because you can't find other work, right? Okay. Yep. Or you, you can't find... A what job paying the wage that you yeah, need. Yeah, you can't find what gotcha. you want. So I would think that would not apply as much when unemployment is as low as it is. But um, so let's say right now it's around 4%, which is the lowest since 2010 when it was at 10%. So what they're saying is, you know, when the economy's good, you're hiring, right? Sure. And it's, see, what's the first thing you do when the economy slows down? You got to cut labor and cut costs. You cut your overhead, which is going to be your employees. So that was one of the big signs that he's saying. Um, so what does that mean for real estate? Now, real estate, still, we're still in kind of a sheltered, I wouldn't say uh, totally sheltered, but we're a little bit of a safe haven. Well, we're not seeing the irrational exuberance that we saw in 08, where it was throw the money, banks, no doc loans, people buying. Just giving oh, If it has anyway. a roof, I'm buying. Right, right. So in real estate, um, by the time we get to this recession, rates will start coming back down, right? Mm -hmm. So that will help us in mortgage business, in the real estate business. That'll protect your investment in your home. Um, so even though that these things are out there on the horizon, there's there's still positives. Still positive, okay. In, in the real estate market in general, that, that's going to help us through that. Well, it's going to be interesting as as we head in because we are insulated again because we. We, people aren't getting themselves also into the situation where no equity. I cringe every time I see somebody want 100% financing, right? Yeah. A rental's not bad. Just go into a rental yeah. if you can't afford a down payment. Yeah, and real estate is a, a tangible asset, right? Oh, sure. They're not necessarily creating more land. Okay? No. They might be building in, in... They are in Dubai and in Singapore where I was, but... And they might be expanding areas... 
uh, you know, cities or, or metropolitan areas might be growing. But, um, you know, it's kind of like we're not changing our living to, you know, where we're living in, uh, in high hover, rises or in hovercrafts yep, yep. or something. Like, uh, you know, the changes in different other industries like Blockbuster went away. Who? You know, Amazon's taking people <laughs> out. You know, so, so I feel like, you know, Real estate is still still going to be. Safe. It's a great investment. I mean, long term. But but the other thing too, I think it's real important. You hear us talking about investment, whether it be the stocks, those type things. And what we're really saying is that is to fund the real estate, not because what we don't. I oftentimes want to say is your primary residence is don't look at it as it needs to be a home first. Investment you get lucky because, quite frankly, if you can beat inflation at three percent year over year you're doing pretty good because you need to look at the inflation value versus what you paid for it and all that. So if you can get out of it what you put into it and pl add inflation, you've done well. Yeah, and, and you know, with it, other, other benefits of being a homeowner, obviously. Huh. Um, Trey Fava Cousy in the house. Yes, Trey Fava is here. Tried he is. to steal a couple T-shirts from him today, but uh, wasn't, you wasn't successful? able to. But, uh but yeah, I think owning a house is going to be an investment. It's going to make his money over time. It is an, just another part of your portfolio, kind of like the uh, the stocks and the other stuff we talk about. Well, it's speaking of stocks, uh, uh, you have a little money in a big brand called Netflix. Netflix. Tell me about Man, it. Man, I tell you, um, you know, I, and I did I did buy a little bit for my my daughter's account, I believe, and don't remember the price I got in it. I think I doubled, but sure. That's what they um, all say. But the high was four hundred and twenty bucks just a, about a week ago. Before yep. what? Before before they they came out with earnings and came out with a subscription uh, decrease of the subscriber. So they're count. losing subscribers, and this is what I want to talk about because I just think it's interesting. We're in this age. I fought cutting the cord hard. Yeah, and and Courtney can attest to that. I hated it, but I Courtney would be, loved it. I would think cutting the cord would mean more people in Netflix. I mean, I, I would think that, you know, as you get your uh, uh, palette of viewing viewing options, Netflix would be one of them. Well, one of the problems is, and it's also the benefit of Netflix from a from a uh, standpoint of value in the company is that they create their own content. Yeah, right. You, they own their own pirate ship, and they can make more money that they way. They don't care what Twentieth Century Fox has to say because guess what. I don't need you. Yeah, if you don't let me uh, sell the rights to your movie, I'll just make my own. Right, but that takes time. And, and money. I mean, absolutely. Or you can create crud like my wife watches on the Hallmark Channel. But That's the same movie over and over again with different actresses from the 1990s and 80s. Yeah, and I'm not... And Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't know that they're losing money on shows that aren't working or that they're just they're losing subscribers they're losing because subscribers but but as a result of that that's why yes because and they have their to shows fund aren't them. working well that's right and, and well people don't like to learn a new thing i think that's what they're finding is that they they're producing all this content and you gotta have time for people to and, yeah. and one of their problems is they throw it all on to you that's one of the great things and one of the bad things i mean you know if you watch any of their of, of their programming, you can get an entire season in one day, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So they vomit all this stuff on you. Absolutely. And so it's not like we do with network TV where you're left with a cliffhanger and you're watching the next week. You may or may not like it. So, but well, I think it's, I think it's, I think it's a pivotal point. They could either, uh, rebound and go much higher. It's funny. Cause I just read an article, I think a few days ago before the earnings, um, uh, that said this stock would be a giant and, go through the roof or go to the moon or whatever it said. And then a couple of days later, we find out they're losing subscribers. So cause, cause remember a lot, half over, I believe over half of their subscriber count was overseas as well to a certain degree. You know, yeah. I mean, that's where their growth was going to be. And well, um, I just know uh, two years ago, I think it was less than a hundred bucks a share and now it's 420. So, or, or it, the high was 420 today is 365. I'm sorry. Um, so it's come down a little bit off that high, but, Still a huge move. What's it? Huge we move and, and again, you know, we, you know, I, I love how a lot of these topics come back on each other. We talked about Kylie Jenner earlier, and when we were talking about her, we were talking about this Ben Stiles. <laughs> we were talking about the idea that times have changed, right? We have got to now look at Netflix as that major media company that is 
ABC, CBS, NBC of our youth. They really are. And maybe the price run up is was just overshot. Oh, may, there's a lot of that. Amazon. Yeah. Look at Amazon. All time high. Yeah. But yet, what's our earnings per share? I mean, it's, it's nothing. Yeah, I, I know they're fourteen hundred dollars a stock. I mean, fourteen hundred dollars. But not a share. near. But not near what we would expect out of Amazon. As much as we all use them. I mean, I tell you, the biggest thing you know, talk about Amazon. Has anybody seen this? Where they're now going to let you basically uh, deliver for them, right? They're going to have people like you could go get you a route, and yeah. you'll deliver for them. Well, it's the biggest. Let me ask you a question. If it was profitable, wouldn't they do it? It's not profitable. So what they're going to do is they're going to sub it out, and guess what happens when that package gets into David Arnett, the new the new driver who's a, uh, a subcontractor, and you lose a package. Guess who's paying for that? Not Amazon. You are. You know. So um, yeah. Now I haven't I haven't seen their their thinking or thought process behind that, but you know, obviously, I wouldn't be the one to question Amazon. Certainly, they they've proven that they've taken. A lot of businesses and made it profitable doing sure. it their way. Sure, they have, but the question is, they've also we've seen stuff go away. Yeah, I mean, so true. They let things come and go because I'm not so sure how women, especially, are going to really like the idea of a UPS driver being able to through Amazon to just walk in their house. So that's going to be interesting. Drones, Bruno's on drones. That's another one. Yeah, that is another one. Uh, uh, Carlisle says Netflix may go up when they get purchased huh. soon. I, I I think they'll be the purchasing. Uh, I would think. Yeah, they might be the purchaser. Um, yeah, they're so big. Right Apple now. could take them. Yeah, down, but that's about it. And I know there was a lot of speculation when they started putting out their own content of whether how expensive it is to put your own content. Cassie Mingle is late. Let's bring Wait. her on the camera. Just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, let's talk about one thing, too. In you know, uh, as we said last week, man, you know how much money people would have made had they just listened to our stock picks? Of course. I mean, rich. Rich, square, today. What did we say? Almost two and a half times? Yeah, from $18 year. to $68 in a year. Well, so I'm going to go back, and I'm going to go back on the pick that I had a while back. Royal Caribbean, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. They, Man. They, they are, whatever, there was no bad news. Um, Royal, people are still spending lots of money on these things, and they spend, keep spending when they get to the ship, and they're just a well-run company. And it, woman re, a woman runs them. Uh, and, and I tell you, I think, I think, Cruise, the cruise business in general is booming. Now, is that a factor of uh, the times and it's just a different way to vacation and the economy's good? Or is I think it the, really... I think it's the fact that you go, you're you going to an all-inclusive resort that actually floats. I think that is a big part of it because most of your money is spent when you get on the boat, right? Absolutely. So you're not constantly... We're spending cash every time you turn around on vacation. Absolutely. We got Judge Tidwell, the Honorable Judge Tidwell from Atlanta. He loves the McRib sandwich. Uh-oh, Carlisle saying uh, Comcast is going to buy nah, Fox. Comcast sure was buying that. Fox's assets, but they dropped that bid today. Okay. So, uh, But I think I think the Royal Caribbean, uh, the business is good. Cruise business seems to be good. Um, the economy has been doing well, so more people have money. That's Wages right. are up. Um, WWE, we talked about that one before. But that more one people keeps have, going up. Have uh, dispensable cash, right, to go on a cruise? Absolutely, and I, I think, uh, except you know, as as you know, I'm not a big fan of carnival, as we call them. Uh, you know, uh, thank the you, poop, Ray. The poop cruise. Man, I tell you, uh, one of the feeds I've got is, uh, you know, put puts a lot of cruise headlines out there, and I keep seeing people falling off. Uh, one one fell off over in uh, Italy. I yeah, what are you doing to fall off? I mean, I know what you could be doing. Yeah, I mean, you fell uh, off a boat. I mean, climbing That's to the top of the ship and huge. falling off would be just nuts. Oh, it's a ship. Sorry, you don't call it a boat. Yes, it's a ship. Yeah, a boat's what you take get to that, the shore get from that the right. ship. Get That's it right. right. Well, um, we're gonna table this last thing on home warranties till next week. I think we've kind of covered everything, but we want to talk about home warranties. Folks are still asking us a lot of questions about that, so we'll talk about that next week. Yeah, um, and listen, uh, I know this is uh, July, so uh, we got school coming up, and uh, people are, are making arrangements to get 
into the houses before school starts, and uh, we got the, the college tuition coming up. We got college football right around the corner, huh? College football. Auburn Tigers. Uh, oh, is there other teams? No, I think that's it. That's it. I mean, hold on. Georgia yeah. Tech. You don't want to count them, though, you Georgia said. Georgia Tech. That's right. Yeah. Or uh, Go Jackets. Absolutely. Uh, Robert Tidwell's favorite uh, South Carolina I'm school. sure Mark Carlisle's got something to say on football season. There you go. Go Gamecocks. I thought it was uh, not Wofford. Not Wofford. What is it? Tidwell went. I can't believe Valerie quit on us. Where'd Valerie she would have given us a roll tide, but she's not here yeah. anymore. Um, oh, well. Next time, Valerie. All right. Well, man, appreciate it. And, yes. Uh, Good man. to be back. We will. War Eagle, Pam. Yes. That's my cousin, Pam. Good to see you. Um, uh, by the way, that's Sasha and, and Sasha Holly's Coster. mom. Awesome. Well, that's uh, Sasha. Holly's mom. Sasha. Sasha. Yeah. Not Sasha. 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 Sasha, yeah. That's right. Um, anyway, we'll see you next Thursday, same time. Uh oh, we. Roll there time. you go. Oh. <laughs> same time, 4 o'clock next Thursday. We'll see you on the happy hour. See you guys. Have a good week. See you later. Hey, Amy.